Well, we're finally here. Who would have thought that it would take me well over a year to get through all four Sword Art Online games, but we can finally put this marathon to rest, and I can move on to greener pastures. Little different format today. I have to go faceless this time since Shy Sky has our camera and I can't be bothered to go get it. Anyway, that's enough wasting time, let's get right into it. How does Fatal Bullet stand up to the other games in this surprisingly good game series? Well, let's find out. This is Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. Fatal Bullet takes place in Gun Gale Online, the third game introduced in the anime, which is a PvP-focused shooter set in a post-apocalyptic world. Now, right off the bat, this game sets itself apart from the other games by having you not play as Kirito. No, instead you play as your own original character, complete with a fairly detailed character creator. This is mine. His name is Aker, and he is glorious. Anyway, your character is a brand new player to GGO after being invited to play by your childhood friend Kureha. As soon as you start playing, she immediately gets you to join her in a competition called the Bullet of Bullets Tournament. By the way, what kind of a name is that? As she wants you to help her claim the awesome reward at the end. However, due to blind luck, you end up claiming the prize instead of her and end up with an AI companion called an Arphasis Unit Type X, which I'm going to refer to as Ray for the rest of the video. By the way, you can also fully customize Ray just like your character and choose their gender. I went with female. Along the way, you meet and befriend Kirito and his friends, and they help you out with completing the main quest. Just like in Lost Song, GGO has a major update, and the party is trying to be the first to complete it. The update adds some new areas to the game's world, but specifically a special new dungeon in the form of a crashed ship called the SBC Flugel. Ray is a requirement to finish the quest, and since she's registered to you, you become the unofficial leader of the group. In addition to the main storyline, Fatal Bullet also includes a full adaptation of the Phantom Bullet arc from the anime. It just sorta of happens towards the end of the game. Kirito fans don't have to go the whole game without playing as him, since for this story you switch control over to him to investigate Death Gun, just like in the show. Also, what kind of a name is Death Gun? That's the second incredibly stupid name in this game, and it's obvious that these names were chosen by a Japanese guy who just threw together English words without knowing how dumb they sound put together. Overall, the Death Gun stuff isn't very well integrated, as it literally just happens, has nothing to do with the main plot, and the game just pauses while you deal with it. Thankfully, it's not that long, really only a couple of fights. Other than getting through the game's main questline and meeting new people, I can't really get much more into the plot since things don't pick up until towards the end. Now then, with the new protagonist comes a new cast of characters. As mentioned before, the main character is one of your own design, but they really have no personality other than being really nice. In fact, you're pretty much just Kirito 2.0, so I'm not entirely sure what the point is. There's also Rei, and while I can't attest to the male version, the female version is bubbly, cutesy, and absolutely adores you. Oddly enough, instead of referring to Rei as either he or she, the other characters refer to her as it. This was likely so that the writers didn't have to write two versions of the lines, one for male and one for female, but it just seems lazy to me. Besides that, it makes the characters come across as oddly cold. One of the themes of Hollow Realization's storyline was that even though Premiere was an AI, they all saw her as a person. Hell, Kirito and Asuna see Yui also an AI as their actual daughter, but Rei is it. It's weird. As I said before, the first character you meet is Kureha, your childhood friend who got you into GGO in the first place. I find Kureha to be one of the most interesting characters that SAO has ever had, anime or otherwise. She's very relatable and well written, and her problems are fairly down to earth in comparison to others. She has a massive inferiority complex because she spent her whole life living in the shadow of her much more talented older sister. She started playing GGO in the hopes of becoming a top player so she can finally say that she did something better than her sister. The fact that you very quickly begin to outpace her starts to cause her to become jealous of you, reaching a boiling point later on in the game. Next up we have Zeliska, a top player who made a name for herself playing solo, but takes a liking to you early on and serves as a mentor figure for you. She has a pleasant demeanor and I also really like her. She also has her own Arphasis unit like Ray named Daisy, but she's not really a character. There's also Basalt Joe, who challenges you to a fight multiple times throughout the game because he wants to get his hands on Ray. Mind you, he doesn't want just any Arphasis unit since he doesn't harass Zeliska or try to steal Daisy. No, he wants Ray specifically. He's actually kind of obsessed, and since my Ray was a girl, his obsession came across as extra creepy, almost stalkerish. He does have a reason for wanting her, but 
I don't think it makes it any better. And finally, we have <sighs> Itsuki. He's an asshole and I hate him. Basically, he's another top player and the leader of a really powerful squadron, but he starts hanging around with you and spends most of his interactions with you just screwing with you. He seems to be personally offended that your character doesn't have any psychological hangups, and he makes it his life's goal to give you trust issues. I absolutely despise him. So, overall, the story of this game is fairly simple, throws in an anime arc where it really doesn't belong, but it has some of my favorite original characters in Kureha and Zeliska. So, moving on to the presentation. The game looks pretty good, about what you'd expect from a game like this. Nothing really special. The music is also, once again, nothing to write home about. I can't think of what any of it sounded like, but it gets the job done. However, I can finally stop complaining about the visual novel style cutscenes. They're finally gone. We have real cutscenes this time. Granted, most of the time it's just the character models standing around and talking, but it's at least more visually interesting than the portraits from the last three games. Also, the voice acting is once again only in Japanese, but that might be a genuine problem now as characters shout things to each other during battle, and I feel like it would be nice to know what they're saying. Speaking of battle, let's talk about the gameplay. Unlike the last three games, which emulated MMOs, Fatal Bullet emulates looter shooters like Destiny, Warframe, stuff like that. In that vein, instead of using swords and axes, you use guns. There's actually a pretty decent variety of firearms, and the game controls about as well as you'd expect it to. There are things like assault rifles, pistols, shotguns, snipers, just to name a few, and you can use photon swords, which are basically lightsabers, and later on in the game you can dual wield as well. Since the game is emulating looter shooters, of course enemies frequently drop loot in the form of new weapons and accessories with varying rarity. You have a home base called the SBC Glocken, and can venture out into the world to fight monsters, complete quests, and there are even NPCs posing as other players to ruin your day. Since this is an RPG, you can also use weapon skills in addition to just firing your guns, and this game actually has a freeform level up system for both yourself and Rey, where you can allocate skill points every level up to any of your stats that you choose. Your stats affect what weapons you can equip and what skills you can learn, so you can build both of them exactly the way you want to. It's pretty great. In addition, every character has a class. You can be either an assault class, basically a DPS style class, a destroyer, which is a massive damage dealer, they tend to use uh, Gatling guns and rocket launchers, engineer, buffs and status ailments, defender, which is just your tank, and healer, which, you know, heals. Interestingly, instead of choosing your class and revolving your playstyle around it, the game assigns you a class based on the weapons and skills you have equipped. You can take three characters with you into the field for a total of four party members, and you have a lot of freedom when it comes to picking a party. It's pretty cool. Okay, now let's get into the stuff that I don't like about this game. It feels like their developers put all of their effort into the gunplay, and didn't really try for anything else. First off, the AI for your party members still sucks. I can't count the number of times I went down in combat, and it took my party members longer than it should have to realize that I was lying on the floor dying. In terms of enemy variety, yeah, it's pretty pathetic. You will see a lot of similar looking automatons and large scorpions out in the world, and bosses are just bigger versions of common enemies. On top of that, the dungeons start to feel really samey to the point that I could have sworn that they used the same basic room layouts and put them together in a different order sometimes. And this game's dungeon design gets downright asinine sometimes. Take the Forest Edge, for example, a late game dungeon. As you explore this dungeon, you will come across two paths, each one ending in a locked door. I scoured the dungeon at least three times looking for the switch to unlock one of them, before I looked it up and realized that in order to get past one of them, you had to trigger a specific landmine trap and let it go off, which will teleport you behind the door. There are several other landmines throughout the game, but never in a million years would I have thought that it was secretly a teleporter. The only way you would ever realize this without looking it up is if you accidentally triggered the landmine and just didn't get out of the way in time. Oh, this pissed me off so much. Okay, rant over. Now, you know how I said that your character is basically Kirito 2.0? Well, you're also just as big of a chick magnet as he is, since you can once again sleep with multiple girls, although you do have to work for it this time. You can also only have your character sleep with girls introduced in the games, so girls like Kureha, Zeliska, Philia, and so on. So, 
Overall, Fatal Bullet, while having an okay story and some of my favorite characters in the series, and decent gunplay, there are just too many issues that seemed lazy to me for this game to pass out Hollow Realization as my favorite in the series. So, that being said, my final rating for this game is a 7 out of 10. It's the same score as the last two, but I think Hollow Realization was overall better. That game just wasn't good enough to get an 8. Well, I'm never doing a marathon again, at least not for an RPG series. This was too draining, and honestly, the reason this game took so long was simply because I was burned out on the Sword Art series after doing the first three. So, no more marathons for me unless the games are short. I'm actually really excited to review the game that we've got coming up next, so be sure to stay tuned, but I'm not going to tell you what that game is here. I'm just going to start letting you guys be surprised at what games I choose to talk about. So, until next time, I'm the Trojan with Digital Bloodlines. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please stay safe out there and have a good night. マスター、私の運動に関するプログラムは規定値をクリアしていません。この程度の走行で転倒や衝突は起こしません。どうかご安心を。あなたたちのような可愛い子には別の危険もあるの。私のそばから離れてはダメよ。承知しました。マスター。